Uh, boiling water is a very common one. That one makes sense to me. What's the problem and, with that? Uh, well, it's good because it does sort of work. Kill some ants? It, it will kill some ants. Right. And in fact, it's one method that's used for fire ants. And so the idea is you go and you get some boiling water, you pour it into the hole, you burn the ants, and they're dead. And uh, it works to a certain extent because hot boiling water will kill some ants and you'll have dead ants around your nest. So it, it looks like it works. What people forget is that the queen and many of the other ants are a couple feet below ground level. Okay. Yes. So you not only have to get the water down to them, but it has to stay hot, right? And the soil is cool. So as soon as the water starts percolating through the soil, it starts cooling off. Yes. So what they find is that if you use like several gallons of hot water on an ant nest, you actually will kill something like 50% of the ants. And the remaining ants may actually move away. Right. So the nest is abandoned and it certainly appears as if it works. I see. But it's almost impossible to kill all the ants in that nest with boiling water because you just don't have enough water. So you're, 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 adding, you're adding water to the soil solution, in a sense. And the soil solution is 8 degrees Celsius or whatever. Right. And there's way more soil solution than water. So it's, it's, just, it's just diluting and the, the third, third, thermodynamics of it all, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to bring the temperature two feet below the surface to a a killing temperature, an ant killing temperature. It, it would take an incredible, uh, yeah, I suppose if you could pump it right in and has some sort of jet, you know, but uh, yes, yes. Yeah. But I think, yeah, it's, it's very possible people, uh, it, it's, it's satisfying if you want to kill them because you're sort of like pouring, uh, like in the old days with uh, like a castle siege, you're pouring boiling oil <laughs> over the walls sort of thing. Uh, and I guess you get to see some dead ants and they maybe they pick up and move on because they just decide it's not worth it to be uh, in that spot. But I mean, they could they could you could kill the ants in your carrot garden. They could move over to your tomato garden, I suppose. Uh, so it's not yeah. necessarily <laughs> the best move. Yeah, it's it's not a good. Thing. I always have visions of someone walking out to the garden with a, a, a you know, a pot of boiling water and tripping. <laughs> yeah, <it's a> good, <laughs> and it just it just never made a lot of sense to me to do this. Yeah. In fact, I this spring I I did a YouTube video to see if boiling water actually kills weeds. And so I went in the house and boiled up the water and I'm walking out with this kettle of boiling water and pouring it on the weeds and I'm thinking, you know, if if I have you know any size garden, I mean I I'd have to have boiled gallons and gallons yeah the water yeah. how functional a lot i mean and this is getting a little bit off topic but a lot of the um suggestions that i hear for pests in particular are are functional for maybe a four by eight garden yeah um, but if you've got 10 four by eight gardens or 24 by eight gardens or 34 by eight gardens uh it's a lot of little dishes of beer for your slugs <laughs> Uh, like it's just you know and people will watch my i mean i've got a big garden big vegetable garden people will say you need some dishes of beer. I'm like, have you seen how big, how much beer? I, you know, uh, it's it's so funny that uh, these things tend to. Uh, they're just not necessarily scalable. Or picking the slugs off. Yeah. And I've got slugs that are the size of a uh, sesame seed. Some of them, you know, yeah. some of them are barely visible, and it's really easy for them to hide. Sure, if they were all the size of my thumb, I could probably do it if I had the time. Um, but given that I have many that are the size of a grain of rice, uh, it's a bit of a chore. Um, okay, so that's boiling water. What else? What's another uh, top one? The other one is coffee grounds. Coffee grounds for ants? For ants. In oh, fact, my. this is what started the whole thing for me a couple of years ago. I read this and I thought, oh, coffee grounds. Well, that's pretty easy to test, right? So I, I went out and I, I always have ants on my patio stones. And I took one of the nest openings and put coffee grounds all around it and waited to see what happened. Well, next morning I came back and they had moved the coffee grounds out of their way and they were crawling all over it. And 
they didn't care. They, they like coffee grounds. <laughs> it didn't do anything. Yeah, it'd just be another organic uh, substance, I would think. I mean, uh, you know, I, I'd be afraid if they started actually using it in some way and they become even more industrious and harder working. Uh, you know? That's right. <laughs> A bunch yeah, of so that, that's a common one, but it doesn't work at all. <laughs> uh, the other one that's very common for lots of pests in the garden are essential oils. Essential oils. And of course, there's lots of different kinds of essential oils, and many people don't tell you which one they're using. It, they're just essential oils. Uh, what people associate with some of these products is the fact that they, they have a very strong aroma. Right. They, they have the smell that they can sense. And people assume that other things, other pests, insects, will, be, um, will also smell that product. And then they'll leave the area because they don't like the smell. So things like peppermint are supposed to work. And um, uh, sage extract and a whole list, list of these things. They're all very aromatic. But I think the thing we forget about is that we smell a certain way with our noses and some things smell to us. That doesn't mean that an ant smells it the same way, right? Or a mosquito or some other kind of insect or a slug. They'll all perceive these chemicals in different ways. And it's quite possible that something we have that we can't even smell really stinks to ants, yes. right? So we can't assume that the insect world is all smelling the same sort of things we do. No, you, you walk by your uh, compost bin on a hot summer day and it, it's, a, it's a hive of insect activity. It's the most offensive thing you can smell. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you're not, they're, they're, they have different priorities. <laughs> yeah, different priorities. Their <laughs> smelling system works differently. And uh, all these, uh, uh, all these uh, living forms will uh, sort of sense chemicals differently. They don't all have noses the way do, we do, right? Right. Well, also just, I mean, stating aromatic or um, essential oil. Uh, that's, a, that's a broad selection of different chemical compounds, right? There, there's uh, many essential oils. Uh, there's different concentrations of those oils. Uh, it's an area that, uh, you know, you could study forever um, and you would, you'd run out, you, you would never run out of essential oils to try to get rid of your ants. <laughs> yes. But in most cases, those things don't work very well. If the ants don't like the smell, they may move over a couple feet and build a new nest, yes. but it's not going to do any harm to the ants. Well, also where, I mean, where I live, a lot of things like that, essential oils or things that people recommend for keeping deer away like um, cayenne or your borax, like a lot of these things because it's uh, damp here and it rains often and that sort of thing. It's, I mean, it's, it's only good till it, you know, if you get dew every night, which we do, yeah. you know, we get dew every night. It's, it's never enough to water the plants in, in terms of it doesn't keep the soil moist. Um, you can have, you can wake up in the morning and every plant leaf is wet, but you put your hand in the soil, it's dry as a bone. And the plants are getting something out of it because the foliage is getting wet, um, but it's dry as a bone. But if you had sprinkled some sort of, you know, thing out there, um, that's definitely going to affect it. Um, also, as I imagine, these things are um, affected by sun, UV, that sort of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So how well do they persist? How, how long do they actually have any sort of effect whatsoever in your garden?